Hello and welcome back to the rock record. Let's talk rocks. Is that a good intro? <laughs> All right, so we are here today at a very exciting spot. This is a spot that I actually, growing up in Montana, have wanted to visit for such a long time. Um, and it's kind of a geologic icon, but it's also kind of underknown. I feel like it doesn't get the love it deserves. So Hazel and I are gonna show you around. Oh. Welcome to the latest rock record. Today we are exploring Bighorn Canyon in Montana and a little bit of Wyoming. This beautiful canyon is a testament to the power and beauty of geological forces. Today we are going to dig deep into the heart of this ancient landscape, uncovering the secrets of its formation and marveling at the wonders it holds. Bighorn Canyon is a geological masterpiece, with its towering cliffs revealing over 500 million years of Earth's history. From the pre-Cambrian granite at its foundation to the vibrant sandstone and limestone layers that adorn its walls, every rock tells a story of ancient seas, shifting continents, and relentless forces of nature. So I've already gotten this wrong like 10 times in my videos. So please excuse me while I read some of this. The rock record in the Bighorn Canyon area begins with the formation of granitic igneous rocks about 3.1 billion years ago. These rocks were later subjected to tremendous heat and pressure and metamorphosed into a granitic gneiss about 2.5 billion years ago. These were uplifted and eroded to a relatively flat plain before 570 million years ago. Sedimentation, uplift, and erosion have sculpted this landscape into the breathtaking vista we see today. As rivers carved their way through the rock, they exposed layers of sedimentary deposits, offering a glimpse into the changing environments that once existed in this region. The sedimentary rock layers of Bighorn Canyon record the sequence of rocks deposited here since seawater covered the area 570 million years ago. So we have everything from the Flathead Sandstone, some conglomerates that formed during storms by higher energy waves. The cliff face of the Ordovician Bighorn Dolomite represents a stable, shallow marine shelf depositional environment where calcium carbonate accumulated to form limestone. Subsequently, the addition of magnesium converted the limestone to dolomite. This marine shelf persisted into the Mississippian time from about 320 to 360 million years ago. This is when the Madison limestone was deposited. This makes up the top 700 feet of the canyon walls and is seen along the canyon rim. So this is most of what we see when we're looking into the canyon overlooks. This limestone is highly resistant to erosion, so it has a major influence on landforms throughout the region. Uplift of the area after the deposition of the Madison limestone resulted in the former seafloor being exposed, and the Madison was subjected to severe erosion, including the development of extensive caves as the limestone was is dissolved. <laughs> Streams deposited red muds, the Amsden Formation, over the eroded Madison, filling most of the caves as well. So the Madison is Mississippian in age. You can see the Madison group right here. And then driving in, there's a lot of red rocks and stuff. And then it's all Amsden here. Now the Amsden is a little bit more iron rich. And so in some places, the Madison actually looks kind of a pinkish color, and that's just staining from the Amsden as the time has eroded it. So in the area driving into Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Area and kind of around the campsites, you can see these outer lying layers. But in the canyon itself, you're mostly seeing those Madison layers. Rock layers that you can see are, again, the Amsden, the Ten Sleep, the Chugwater, the Sundance, the Morrison, and the Cloverly. The Ten Sleep Sandstone, which overlies the Amsden, is composed of sands that were deposited in sand dunes and beaches along the coastline. So this is the kind of time that you want to be hanging out in. Beachy, sandy, ripple marks, and large crossbeds characteristic of these nearshore environments of deposition are typical in the Ten Sleep. It's hard to miss, but you'll also come across another red formation. This one is very thick and noticeable, and it surrounds pretty much the entire Bighorn Canyon. You'll see it driving in. This is the Chugwater Formation. It forms red bluffs facing toward and encircling the Bighorn and Pryor Mountains, and consists largely of a red sandstone. 
It ranges in thickness from about 450 feet along Bighorn Canyon to more than 650 feet near the head of Soap Creek. The most noticeable feature of the Chugwater Formation on a large scale is the red brick color caused by the oxidation of iron minerals in the rock. This color is occasionally interrupted by streaks and spots of reduced iron, making it a light bluish gray color. I found this is oolitic limestone. And these are little, um, what are called oolites. The Morris information is really important in this area. Um, it represents a coastal plant environment with lush plant growth and numerous dinosaurs. So a lot of fossils are found in this area. This Jurassic Age formation was deposited widely across the Rocky Mountains and the Colorado Plateau, and it's well known for the many dinosaur fossils it has yielded. So this name might be a little bit more familiar to you. So all of those depositional layers were deposited over tens of thousands of millions of years and lithified and formed into rocks. So then what happened? So to the north over here is the Prior Mountains, and then there's a whole dry head basin down here. The rocks here age from two and a half billion years old to just 300 million, so that's quite a time span to be over here. The major mountain building episode for our section of the Rocky Mountains is known as the Laramide Orogeny. This uplift started about 70 million years ago. The Bighorn Mountains were uplifted in a big, long arch that we call an anticline. This orogeny happened over about 15 million years. The Laramide orogeny was the result of the North American and the Pacific tectonic plates, which caused the buckling of the Earth's crust and uplifted the entire Rocky Mountain chain. By studying the rocks in the highest part of the Bighorn Mountains and the lowest parts of the Bighorn Basin to the west, we know that the mountains have been uplifted more than 30,000 feet higher than the same level of the rocks in the basin. Isn't that crazy? Prior mountains are to the west and north of Devil Canyon Overlook and are good examples of fault block mountains. When the Earth's crust breaks, it can form big blocks of rock. Some blocks get pushed up while others sink down. The ones that get pushed up become fault block mountains. They're kind of like giant steps in the Earth's crust. From Bighorn Canyon, when you're driving out to Horseshoe Bend on Wyoming 37, the tilted up fault blocks of the Big Prior Mountain and East Prior Mountain are pretty obvious to the north, so keep an eye out for those. On the west side of the Bighorn Mountains, the fault does not come to surface and only produced a folding dramatically revealed as a monocline. This can be seen where the Bighorn Canyon has cut the canyon across the north end of the Bighorn Mountains. This is like an escalator step rising up with a covering of carpet. The Bighorn Mountains, with their towering peaks and rugged terrain, are a testament to the power of the Laramide orogeny. As tectonic forces push and pull the Earth's crust, these mountains rose from the depths shaping the landscape and influencing the flow of rivers and streams. Looking into Bighorn Canyon, it is so hard to imagine that water created this. When you think about dripping water on a rock, you don't really think about it, but it's actually causing little teeny microscopic amounts of erosion. Now, take that, but make it a river, and let it run through these rocks for millions of years. And that's how Bighorn Canyon came to be. Same with the Grand Canyon. So as time goes on, this meander will actually cut itself off because water likes to take the shortest course. Now in the distance here, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it on here a little bit better. It's actually an abandoned meander where the river used to run. You can see it a little bit better on this here. Way back there is a little abandoned meander. Pretty cool, huh? Water is part of what we call mechanical or physical erosion. This involves physically breaking rocks into fragments without changing the chemical makeup of the individual minerals that make up the rock. Water, wind, and ice expanding in cracks are all examples of mechanical erosion. As these rocks spend more time exposed to all of the elements and the weather, the canyon walls gradually wear away. Hello! But Bighorn Canyon is more than just a geological marvel. It's a playground for geotourists and outdoor enthusiasts alike. From guided hikes to interactive exhibits, visitors can immerse themselves in the wonders of this ancient landscape and gain a deeper appreciation for the forces that shaped it. As you explore the canyon, keep an eye out for the diverse wildlife that calls this place home. From the iconic Bighorn Sheep, where the canyon gets its name, to the majestic birds of prey that soar overhead, 
Every encounter offers a glimpse into the intricate ecosystems that thrive in this rugged terrain. Whether you're kayaking the majestic lake from below or marveling at the ancient rock formations from above, there's no shortage of geologically themed activities to enjoy in Bighorn Canyon. So grab your hiking boots and get ready to embark on an adventure through time. Dig into the geological wonders of Bighorn Canyon and discover the beauty of the natural world in all its splendor. Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Area, where geology comes to life and every rock tells a story of Earth's ancient past.